Kalo Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Bahashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles of elders and elders of great millstone who rule well over the flock. Shalom and salutation to your brothers out here present words of truth and sincerity. I'm Rapa Ma. We're gonna get into today um, you know, just marriage and what it used to be, what it's now, and why GMS um doesn't resort to marrying our women, wives, baby mothers girlfriends why marriage is just not a chapter in our book in this society in this age we living in right now even though it's spoken of biblical it's a biblical principle um but what happened what happened to um the sanctity of marriage is the answer to why um brothers will not um sign these contracts contractually get contractually paper it's quote unquote married today um Let's start off with all the scriptures, right? So Genesis 2 and 18, it says, And the Lord power said, It is not good that man should live, should be alone. It will make him, I will make him a help me for him. All right. So from the beginning, time of Adam, um, the Lord had women um, before Adam, the Lord had created male and female. And what he did was, you know, those were the Adamites. And what he did was he created male first and then he created female to be a help for male. He created the woman to be a help for man. So just off of the, from the time of creation alone, how far we have strayed from a woman being a help. When you think of the word help or a helper, if you have a business and you um um purchase helpers or pay helpers that's exactly what you're going to expect helpers you're not going to expect the helpers to go ahead and start doing work for other employers while he's on the clock he or she is on the clock for you well that's what the woman's initial job was to be a help meet for him okay I mean, it doesn't matter what translation you read that in. Um, it'll be the same uh, situation here. If you read it in the NLT, the Lord power, then the Lord power said it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. NIV says a helper who is suitable for him. ESB says a helper who is fit for him. Um, CSB says a helper corresponding to him. All right. So whether you're suitable, you're fit, you're right, you're perfect for this man, you are his help. Okay. And so in order to be a man's help, you have to understand that man, you have to abide by that man's laws and his strict regulations on how often you can go out, if if at all, you can just be seen at night with the girls, girls trips and all of this. This is this this culture has destroyed American culture for the most part has digressed and has become the fact in which destroys families. Because when you're talking about marriage, you're not just talking about a man and his wife. You're actually talking about a family. OK, and at, just as just as if you're in a relationship and you start to beat on that woman, you can expect her family members to intervene. It's not like, you know, you, you, she she's no longer attached at all to her family members in this society. You can expect her brother, her cousins to, to come in and deal with you. All right. For putting hands on your wife, your woman, your girlfriend. Um, that's why this is, this is about families. Okay. Um, so the most high said that, um, he said here and, um, Genesis 2 and 22 and the rib, which the rib is going into a family member. See, the rib is an allegory. Uh, it, it's an expression, a figure of speech of a, a cousin of Adam it says in the rib, which the Lord God had taken from man, made of he a woman, and he brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. 
She was the relative of Adam. All right, Genesis 5 and 2 tells you male and female created he them. So all this intergender and gender neutral, male and female was what the Most High created. If you believe in creation, there's no such thing. There's no in-betweens. It says, and he blessed them and called their name Adam. So that's why we know that there were many people. They were a people called Adamites, their name. It says in the day when they were created. So if you go on to Genesis 9 and 1, it says, And the Yahweh blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. So in order to do that, uh, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, um, you would have to have a woman. You, you, you have to put your seed into a woman and be and, and, and multiply. It's not a class on sex. It's a class on, um, on marriage. And so, ultimately, these women who you would choose were who? What kind of women were these? Usually, these were women who were, um, let's put it like this, virgins. Okay, I know that word is very uh, inconsistent with modern uh, women today. It's something that they just give away freely. But um, it's the virginity, you see, that... that um, allow for marriage to actually um, be um, acceptable, it, it, which is why the marriage was acceptable, because that woman would be a virgin, okay? Um, let's see here. Uh, Judges 11 and 37, and she said unto her father, let this thing be done for me. Let me alone two months. This is when, um, I believe, Jephthah, um, Let's see if I can get his name here. Uh, went and um, told the Lord that he was going to kill the first person, murder, kill the first, first person he saw. He made a promise to the Lord, a vow that he had to keep. And the first person he saw was his um, his, his daughter, Jephthah. And so he had to go ahead and, and, and kill his daughter. It says, and she said unto him, my father, if thou hast, um, like, and she said unto her father, verse 37, let this thing be done for me. Let me alone two months that I may go up and down the mountain upon the mountains and bewail my virginity and I my fellows. And he said, Go. And he sent her away for two months. So and she went with her companions and bewailed her virginity upon the mountains. Women today, um, it is not taught that your virginity matters. It is not taught that your virginity is pure. It's just something that a woman wants to toss away, toss out. Okay, but um, in all actuality, um, a, a man wouldn't marry, and still to this day, men don't take too kindly to a woman with high body count let's just put it like that which leads back to one thing men don't want women who have slept with men who have laid down with men we we it's it's compromising uh, when you're dealing with a woman who has had other sausages meats delivered into her um boutique into her store into her storefront all right she is her shelves have been filled with different um um, um, um meats and you, as a man, you have to deal with all the emotion and mental and physical trauma that was left over by these men who has spread seed and possibly have had impregnated, obviously, a lot of these women. And they're left for you. That is not the, um, the choicest um, of the flowers that you want to pick. That is not the choice fruits that you desire from the tree. You desire a fruit that is still hanging from the branch, ready to fall off just right. Not one that is on the ground, soggy, with worms out of it. And so Genesis 24 and 16, and the damsel is very fair to look at. A damsel uh, is a young woman. It says a virgin. Neither had any man known her. So that's why we know it's talking about um, a woman who is not just a marriageable age, which is a virgin, but a woman who was never touched by a man. It says, and she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. So all throughout the scriptures, you have uh, 
um, many women old enough to fill pictures and do deeds for their families, but they're still virgins. Judges 21 and 12, and they found among the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead 400 young virgins that had no known no man by lying with any male and they brought them up into the camp to shiloh which is in the land of canaan so virginity was very very important man and so we fast forward to a time where we're in now and is it has men you know why you 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 go ahead and you get married uh usually for the sake of not creating a whore all right, if you were not to marry that woman and you have sex with her and you take her virginity and you pass her, you know, you pass her off, she becomes a whore if initially. That's the beginning of her whore, a whore's lifestyle. And from that moment on, as you can see on the screen, she continues to be a whore. All right, she opens her mouth for whatever traveler comes by to, and she, 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 um, assumes a position for whatever, um, uh, um, uh, male she desires um that's not the way that the most high desired for especially for Israelite women um so all throughout the scriptures you'll have um for instance Paul is speaking about marriage in first Corinthians 7 chapter and he said in verse um, 1 now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me it is good for man it, it is good for me a man not to touch a woman. Why? Because he gives his time to the Lord. We are Israelite men who are diligently seeking the Lord. We really don't have time to be all into these women. We don't have time for it. Hell, you don't have time for it for many reasons. One, you might have a family of your own you got to take care of. Two, you, you the bells ain't going to stop coming in. Three, um, it's, it's it's time to buckle down. We write at the... Uh, at the uh, beginning of World War Three, things is going to get hot, heavy, and serious. We're not in the time to really be focusing on women. And that's why you should, you know, be honest with the woman and let her know when you meet her. Hey, look, you know, um, you ain't going to be the only one. If if she's not, if she's too concerned with who you are dealing with, she's, she's invested in the wrong um, mentality. Don't be surprised, brothers, if you just can't find a woman. Especially, not just any woman, a good woman. Do you want any woman? Do you want a decent woman? Somebody who's who's worthy of you even bringing around your folks. Do you want that? You, you It's like, it's, it's more rare than rubies. The scripture says, it's more precious than rubies if you find a good woman. So verse 7 says, For I would, I would that all men were even as myself. But every man that hath his prosper, um, hath his prosper gift of Yahweh, one after this manner, and another after that. I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them that if they abide even as I even as I. And Paul was a eunuch. Now how do we know that? Because Paul made um Paul abstained from being with a woman. That's what he did. He abstained from being with women so that he can serve the Lord, which is a very honorable thing to do. You got some brothers that are also eunuchs, okay? When you read in Matthews 19 and uh, 10, it says, His disciples say unto him, If the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. But he said unto them, All men cannot receive this saying, save they to whom it is given. For there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb, meaning they um something was wrong with their reproductive system. All right, they were a birth defect. It says, and there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. In the ancient world, uh, if you, certain kings would bring men to their um, to serve um, where their harems were. All right, rich men and nobles would bring men, and they would have them serve with their women. And then to keep the women pure, they would cut the man's genitals off. They were made eunuchs. It says, and there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. Well, that's Paul. All right. Or men like Paul following after that stead were abstaining from sex until the wedding 
in marriage of the Havasha and the, and the elect. Says he that is able to receive it, let him receive it. So Paul wasn't going off. Paul wasn't being over-righteous. He was doing the work of the Lord and he was desiring the gifts of the Lord and he wasn't settling with the dregs of what we have now. And the women back then was much uh, more desirable than they are now. How much more now? So the reason men actually have sex is why? One, for procreation. And two, because you burn it. What does that mean to burn? You, you, you burn them. You lusting after the woman. You really want to have sex. It's sometimes nothing more than that. And that's what um, a lot of um, women don't understand. That they defile themselves by having sex. But a man, is it, it, through having sex, is not defiling himself. Okay, A man through having sex with men is defiling himself. A man who, who has sex with other men's wives is defiling himself. But a man having sex with an unmarried woman um, is not defiling at all. 1 Corinthians 7 and, and 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, which would mean whoredoms, which would mean harlotry in the sense of adultery, meaning a, a, a woman that is being um, tossed around, flipped around. You know, growing up in America, that was a, that was at one point you, you in, as a teenager, it was like the coolest thing. Can you find a girl that had sex with all of us? Can you find a girl that just be taught that we could toss around for the boys? You know, this is this is um fornication that we're supposed to be avoiding. You know, you don't you, you might have had fun, but you just created, you know, a broken a, you just created a broken uh system. You helped forward a broken system. You know, by taking a woman who could have been somebody's wife and you popped her, you tossed her around and you sent her on her way and she's forever broken. Down the line, she's going to have kids and her kids is going to continue to process. It says here, let every man have his own wife to and to let every woman have her own husband. And women, oh, y'all love this scripture because it signifies, well, a woman supposed to be with one man, but a man supposed to be with one woman. It signifies monogamy. But that means King David, as well as King Solomon, as well as Abraham, as well as uh, uh, Jacob, um, Isaac, all of these men were wicked and evil. If you can go ahead and say that, then, then you got it. But I guarantee you ain't going to sit here and say King David was wicked because he had more than one wife. Um... It says here in 1 Corinthians 7 and 9, but if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. So even as you would get betrothed, ancient world terminology, you, you are set up to marry somebody in the future. If you had sex with it before the marriage actually took place, it's not a sin because you burn it. And it's better that you burn after your, um, a wife that's betrothed to you or a woman that you'll stick with and to burn after something unholy and unrighteous. Like in this case of Colombia, religion is so strict there in Colombia that men had, that um, women are staying virgins for so long because of religion, that men had began to take to, to animals, donkeys. And no, that's not normal. But all right, that doesn't uh, uh, get them off the hook. That's bestiality. You get put to death for that in the Bible. Um, but, but, the the sake the, the the to 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 tell a whole um territory or a whole city of women that they can't have sex at all until they go walk down the aisle and sign papers. Well, well, that's not right too. That's off because the woman and the man is gonna be lusting, and they gonna be burning. And so you know, Paul was speaking about you know if you have young daughters. You know, it's better to have, if you can be on top of them 24-7 and make sure that they ain't, you know, doing something savagery to take care of their burning desire. As opposed to, um, you know, that's that's a good thing. That's the best thing. But if you can't watch your daughter 24-7, it's better to have her married, man. Because she's going to be out here like this. Out here like this. Um, claiming how ill it is to cheat. How cool it is to cheat. Um, disregarding her virginity. Hating 
the uh, virginity. All right. Not looking for a husband, but looking for different men, men that can fulfill lust at different times. And so all the, you know, what what marriage is supposed to be, a marriage um, was desired to be. We're going back to Genesis 2 and 18 again. And the Lord God said, it is not good for the man that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. From that time, from that time, um, what has happened, man? You know, um, men and women have strayed from that. Um, that order of things to have, you know, the order which consists of um, the father, Yahweh, his son, Yahweh Shah, then man, then woman. You have a society in which women have been raised up over men. You have a society that um, that men and women um, are don't really belong together. MGTOW, men go their own way, women go their own way, whatever. But in all actuality, it's all this all is is a result of the um how distant we've gotten from the natural order of things, the natural order of relationships. All right. And because we stray so far away, um we 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 now have to deal with a life of whoredoms in a in a world full of uh, over lusting, all right. A world full of over sexualization, a world full of pedophiles, a world full of bestiality, all right. And it's all stemming from the simple fact that when I'm, I'm you know, virginity is is not um, is not desired anymore. Um, the concept of marriage has become so legally. Uh, 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 undesirable for a man that nobody would ever dare to sign them damn papers, man. You got to be out your mind to sign a contract in which when the, the 90% of the time the woman leaves the man and she can leave with half or let's say you're broke, you don't have nothing. But still, who would want to build something that at any point in time somebody can just feel like they can walk out? And well, that's not what they say when they get married. They say, um, till death do us part. Those words ring true for a lot of men, but they don't for a lot of women. So, you know, your wife might be a whore, you marry her, and then she falls in love with another man. What are you to do? What are you to do? The scriptures tell you um, when adultery is committed on you, that man and woman should be put to death. But not in this society. Up until this day, there's like 0.5% of states that uphold um adultery as any type of legal implications for adultery other than that man you just gotta wipe your tears and and give her half and keep it moving well that's not what it, it, you know our marriage was designed and because they got up in there and mixed it up guess what now we dealing with this all right now we dealing with this and so um even though men and women are supposed to be together you have groups like Men, MGTOW, groups like, um, I forget the right, Igmore, um, uh, Red Pill, that desire not to get married. And we understand it, you know, by design, we, we, we have, we know better than to sign contracts with these women who desire multiple men, desire to be looked at. They need attention. They got daddy issues. It wasn't raised right. Men mistreated them all their lives, and you're supposed to be the one that saves them, take them off these streets. She's for the streets, man. She's for the streets, man. Sometimes you got, you, some, it's a hard feeling when you got to look over and you, you got to roll your head over in bed at three in the morning, and your girl up on the phone texting. Or she might be asleep, and you go through that phone, and you see all type of business that you ain't approve of. Or just, just the knowledge that your girl had, uh, cucumbers, she done laid in the cucumber field quite a quite a quite a bit, extensive cucumber uh, uh, employment before you met her. A lot of uh, frequent flyer miles, okay, on that motor before you actually uh, tapped into it. All right, so there's a lot of reasons and things that were really are painful even after marriage, man. So remember this, man. You know the Lord. The Lord is coming. The Lord is not. He's going to make all of this right. 
He gonna, he gonna stop persecuting us by having our women be the biggest whores in this world. He gonna give us the life that we desire to have, man. He's gonna um, regulate, bring regulation and order back to this place. And that's why we waiting for that marriage. Before you think about marriage, the the what the marriage that needs to happen is the marriage between Yahweh Shah and the elect. And until that happens, there ain't no marriage I'm willing to agree with or sign. Lord willing, this video is edifying. Until next time, shalom.